One of the techniques I get asked a lot about is how do you skip a bait, whether it's a jig or soft plastic or whatever, up underneath boat docks and up underneath willow trees. And there's a lot more to it than people think. A lot of people are good using spinning equipment. They can take floating worms and they can skip them a long way. You might be asking yourself, well, I can do it very easy with my spinning equipment. Why don't I just stick with that? Well, you've got your limitations there. You don't have near the power of the big heavy rod to get the fish out of the cover. You don't have the cranking power of a bait casting reel. And this is a heavy duty rig. I'm geared up with 25 pound Tatsu right here where I can really pull them fish out of the cover. So when you're going into those nasty places, you have to use the bait casting to really have an opportunity to get those fish out. If it's a scenario where you don't have to deal with heavy cover, yeah, you can get by with your spinning equipment, uh, but for heavy nasty cover and big fish, I recommend big rod, big line, and a reel to match. When it comes to bait casting equipment, you really gotta start out by adjusting your reel correctly. And every bait caster's got a tension knob. Now this happens to be my flipping reel, but Hold your rod straight out and you start adjusting this tension knob so that your bait will pull the line off, but say when it hits the floor or when it hits the bottom of your boat, your spool stops turning. If you've got it set so loose that your spool keeps turning when that bait stops, you're gonna probably get a big backlash if you try to skip because that bait's slowing down on each skip and your spool's still running too fast. If I've got a half ounce bait on, I'm gonna adjust it so that that a uh, half ounce will barely pull the line out. If I go to a heavier bait, I'm gonna have to tighten it a little more. If I go to a lighter bait, say downsized to a quarter, I'm gonna have to back that tension knob off a little bit so that that lure, the weight of the lure, will still pull the line off. So this is the most important feature right here on anybody's bait caster, whether it's my signature reel or whether it's just a regular bait casting type reel. So very important, use your tension knob, make that adjustment, so that it just slowly, no matter what the weight of your bait is, it slowly pulls the line off the reel. Now, the other important part is how you run the angle of it. If you try to do this, you're gonna bury that bait into the water. So it's almost like a golf swing where you're coming across and you see how it'll just skip like that? Because of the angle that you're actually hitting the water. It's all about the angle. And you can skip it way up underneath something by doing that particular angle. Now I'm using a flipping stick here. If you had your bait caster and you wanted to do it with a bait caster, then you kind of do this technique right here where you're actually skimming it across the water and it'll skip up underneath there. But for the actual pitching part, it's kind of coming across just like that and getting that angle. You're keeping the bait low to the water. The lower you start out, the easier it is to skip it with. And you can skip it. You can actually start on one side of the dock and skip it out from the other side. Lighter baits, this is kind of a heavy bait I got here for skipping. Lighter baits work a little bit better when it comes to jigs. You know, a quarter, three eighths is probably the perfect weight. When you get to these halves and three quarters, it becomes a little more difficult to skip, but you can still do it. All about the angle on how you hit the water. A little practice and you can get really good at it.